from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, to they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out, and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland, rivers, wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people who I am formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. 
brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing. Forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the price of God's upward calling, in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and told them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman who was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, who in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. When, but when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the 
one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So, he was left alone before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go. And from now, do not sin anymore. The gospel I grew up in a family of, of eight kids. I, I was the youngest. And um, talking to my brothers and sisters, it, it, it seemed, it, it was very clear that my dad changed the strategy of raising me and my, my sister, Rebecca. My brothers would tell us that he used to beat them when they were little they disobey or they do something stupid. But I can't recall really in my fresh memory that the time when my, my dad punished me by beating me. I, I, I remember, I remember and I used to hate it that you do something today was just at the time when you think that you have forgotten, that's the time to sit me down and start explaining things. And he wanted me to go through that and know the repercussion of what I did, why it was bad for me to do that. So he used to tell my brothers, I wish you could just beat me at once and then I just forget it. But he would want me to go through that. He did that now and then with my, my sister, Rebecca. When I was in formation in Botswana, in South Africa, I did the same method, actually. And novices would make mistakes, would do something which, and they would be really, really nervous. I would take time. I would take time and then when they think that I've forgotten, I would call them and sit them down and talk to them. And, and they felt that it was very, very successful method uh, or strategy, if you call it. Because in life you have to know the time correct something. The, the problem of doing it right away, in my case, I can easily talk of anger. I'll be angry with what has happened, and I'll just go and, and say whatever I want to say at that point. The benefit of talking a little bit later I'll have time to think about it. And probably my approach to the issue would be completely different if I would just approach it right away when some, something happens. I'm, I'm sharing you this because of today's gospel. Today's gospel, it's, it's an interesting gospel. The gospel 
for really, I'm not going to talk about the woman. I'm going to talk about the aspect of time. It seems that Jesus is aware, is aware of whatever happens. And and, and he takes his, his, his time when, when the scribes and the Pharisees accused this woman I don't know how long it took. When they started accusing this woman and what he did, he started writing things down. The, the, the scripture does not tell us what he was writing down, and, and I think because it's not important. And then, and then, and then he gets up, he looks at them, and says, "If there's anyone." How long again? I think it was half an hour, an hour. But but Jesus is really taking his time. He uses time here to heal. And and and, 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 and what happens really? One by one. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> it's interesting. Jesus really is asking this woman, "Did anyone condemn you?" And she says, "No, no, no one condemns me." And Jesus says, "Neither do I condemn you." Of all people, would probably Jesus would be the first one to condemn this woman. Why, why, why Jesus did not condemn? Because God does not condemn anyone. Jesus did not condemn. Jesus did not condemn. He did not condemn this woman. Why, why? We condemn, we condemn when we stop. Condemn when we stop seeing a person in front of us and we only see the act. That's why we condemn sometimes. Jesus did, did not see the act, he saw a person. And, and what, what, what he did to impress the part of that, follow me here, he, he did something very interesting. He, he did something very that you, I not condemn you. Because Jesus saw two things in that woman. This word can bore you with a lot of words. He saw two things. The first thing Jesus saw, he saw the image of God in this woman. Yes, she's created by image of God. So he saw the image of God in this woman. He did not see the act of adultery.
church, that we may bring mercy and forgiveness to all, giving new life to sinners, controlling the world of alternative to retribution and punishment, we pray to the Lord. For those in authority, particularly in our judicial system, that they may temper justice with mercy as they seek the common good, we pray to the Lord. For peace, that God's Spirit will change hearts, bring an end to violence, and establish peace and justice in every land, we pray to the Lord. For all who are suffering, particularly refugees from Ukraine, that they may know the power of Christ's resurrection and the hope that Christ offers for tomorrow, we pray to the Lord. That we may continue to fast, pray, and give alms as our Lord guides us to do, and that those habits may extend beyond this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, and for the deceased members of the Dan and Heinz family, whom we remember in a special way as this Eucharist, we pray. My name is Sue Brooks. Once again, I come to you on behalf of our pastor and as a representative of the Parish Unification Committee. I am pleased to inform you that the Archdiocese and Episcopal Council and Cardinal Cupich have approved the name for our new parish. The formal new name for the Unified Parish is St. Peter and Lambert. This is the name. This is the name that was most requested by the community when we held the survey a few weeks ago. The approval of the new name triggers a few initiatives and activities that you will be hearing about over the next few weeks. But first things first, we are launching a parish registration drive beginning today. We are looking, we are asking every family to register itself and all its members with the Unified Parish. Whether you are in whether you have been a prisoner of either St. Peter or St. Lambert for a lifetime, we need you to register again. Why are we doing this? We want to merge the database of the parishes from both churches and build a new and better, better database. But after a careful review of the list of both campus, campuses, we have concluded that there are too many inaccuracies and too many information gaps that cannot be corrected. They must undertake a new re-registration drive. The re-registration will be simple and not time-consuming. You will be able to register via paper form or electronically. The ushers will hand out registration forms as you leave Mass today. The same form will also be printed in the bulletin the last two weeks of April. If you wish to fill out a paper form, please bring it back to any Mass at either church to an usher to place in the collection basket. We would prefer that you register electronically to ease the data entry burden on the office. There is a link to register on both web websites on the main page. However you choose to participate in the registration, paper or electronically, we ask that you please have it completed and submitted by the end of April. As we compile the new and improved database of begin to develop a holistic communication plan to make sure that all prisoners will be aware and be able to communicate about the many issues and plans for upcoming events and help us better discern, discern the needs of the community. 
music minister at the St. Lambert campus after 33 years of dedicated service. Join us today after the noon mass in the St. Lambert campus, Roberts Hall, as we thank Steve for his faithful ministry. Next weekend, we begin Holy Week. Please refer to the schedule and the bulletin for the times of our Holy Week. 